Today I want to talk a little bit about how to deal with bullies. Bullies is a really big problem in schools. You might personally be affected by bullying, and it, and it honestly it, it transcends just schools. What that just means just means it goes beyond just schools. Um, bullying can happen in the workplace. It can happen uh, in your own house. You know, it can happen with own within your own group of you know friends. Um, bullying takes place all the time, and how you react to it is going to make a really big difference in how you're going to feel at the end of the day, and what kind of friends and people you're going to end up interacting with. My advice to you when it comes to bullying is I, I have three key pieces of advice. My first one is really actually listen during the bullying lectures at school. I know they sound boring. I know they sound like they don't apply to your situation. I know you feel like some of the kids might be like, well, I'm not bullied right now, so why do I got to tune in? Well, the point is, at some point in your life, every single person experiences, experiences bullying. No matter how cool you are, how good you are, or whatever, you will always experience bullying at some point in your life. Maybe you're not experiencing it in middle school, 6th or 8th grade. Maybe you're like a popular kid, but who knows what happens when you get into high school. You're going to have a whole lot more people to interact with, and you don't really know exactly how things are going to play out, right? Maybe there's another popular kid in the high school already. Maybe he's a junior already, and he starts making fun of you like your first day because you trip and fall and drop your books, and all of a sudden you're known as Clumsy Kevin, for you know your high school career, and it just kind of snowballs, and they just keep making fun of you, and you get upset, and whatever, and so it kind of perpetuates itself. So you don't really know when you might get made fun of. And and one last example for those who feel like, oh, I'm way too cool, I'm never going to get made fun of. Like, I can't remember his name, but there was a football player recently in the NFL, right? He's an athletic person. He made it to the NFL, so he's really good. He's Pretty much better than most other people around him if you make it to the NFL. And when he was in his NFL team, you know, during his first year, you know, they were making fun of him, right? A little hazing thing, kind of like an initiation type thing, you know. Just giving him a hard time about whatever it was. So maybe he just started off on the wrong foot with some popular players. They just had a good laugh at his expense and they just kept on about it. You know, they just kept the joke going. Maybe he got a bad nickname. And it kept spiraling them, spiraling out of control. And I know they, they were like texting them and tweeting them and stuff like that. And just kind of giving them a hard time. And he was just really getting annoyed, didn't know how to deal with it. So, like, you know, making them want to leave the team or feel uncomfortable. It's just, it just sucks. He's being bullied, basically. He's an NFL player, right? So anyone can get bullied. And you're not just going to get bullied in school. You're going to encounter it at different points in your life. But there are a lot of tools to deal with it. So if you are a person who is bullied or just want to know the tools to help build up your character, to help find ways to deal with it, then that's what I'm going to offer you today. And the first tool is listen during those bullying lectures in school. They actually do make a difference and they do work. And here's why. So you're going to hear a lot of things like stop, talk, and walk. right? And trust me, I'm going to get to new stuff too, but I want to first start with some of the stuff you already know, and I just want to maybe explain it in a way that might make a little bit more sense to you. So they have this tool called Stop, Talk, Stop, Walk, and Talk. Sorry, Stop, Walk, and Talk. Um, and basically it's just little techniques to do to help get a, bullying, a bully to stop bothering you. So the first thing they, they do is just, hey, tell that person, stop what you're doing. Make it clear to them that you know what it is and that you would really like it to stop. And the earlier you do this, the better, right? When it becomes a habit, a repetition or whatever that they've kind of gained a lot of enjoyment out of, it's going to be harder to make them stop just later on. So after like day two of them saying, you know, hey, clumsy Kevin, because you tripped one time or... You wore a pair of ugly shoes or whatever. Can you just like, like, listen, guys, please drop it. It really is annoying to me. So, like, I really don't want to talk to you guys if you're just going to keep talking about that. Like, sorry, messed up, whatever, right? 
So yeah, I was clumsy that day. Whatever. You know? So make it clear, you know, that, you know, you're just finding it annoying and you'd like it to stop. Right? Um, that is the first thing. Because sometimes they will just stop. They're like, all right, you know, someone in the group, like, all right, just leave him alone, whatever. He doesn't like it. Right? And some people in the group might be thinking that, right? But they just don't have the confidence to say it. But once you kind of say it, then they're kind of they're willing to join you and help you out. Be like, yeah, let's just leave this guy alone, right? Because not everyone in that group that's bullying you. Because I'm not this one person, but sometimes it can be a, a group of people bullying. But not everyone in that group necessarily wants to bully you. It could be like their little leader that wants to bully you, and then people are just kind of playing along with it. So if you can tell them to stop, you know, you might be able to get some support, and they'll they'll just stop, and then that'll save you a big headache, right? So the second thing to do is. And this is a really powerful tool, is ignore them. The walk thing, right? They actually say walk away, but more than walk away is to ignore them, right? They say pretend you got your favorite music playing in your head or plug your ears or whatever. I wouldn't plug your ears, but I would ignore them. Pretend like what they say doesn't matter because it really doesn't. It's just some annoying people that you don't care about saying hurtful and mean things. Just ignore them. And ask yourself, and why, why does ignoring work? Well, who would you want to bully if you were a bully? Do you want to bully the person that you can get a rise out of? That when you make fun of, they reply and they like try to like fight back or you know or start crying or say whatever, right? So you're gonna bully the people that you get a big reaction out of. If you, if you don't if you bully someone and they just sit there and just stare the entire time. And they do that for day after day after day after day, like, you know, 10 days straight. Eventually, it gets a little tiring bullying them. You know, why doesn't a bully try to bully a wall or a phone or, you know, a rock or something? Right? Because they're going to get no reaction out of it. It's not going to do anything. So if you just tend to ignore them, pretend they don't exist, you know, and even tell them, like, listen, I don't care how much you guys talk. I'm just ignoring you because what you're saying is annoying. And just keep doing that. Keep doing that every single day. And trust me, mo vast majority of bullies, pretty much all of them, are eventually going to get bored of trying to bully somebody that doesn't react at all. Yeah, you know, just, you know, if you guys are annoying, just leave me alone. I'm not going to reply to you. So... Like, other than saying this, I am not replying to you, so do whatever you want. Start doing your work. Pay attention to your thing. And eventually, it's going to stop. It's going to get a little bit better, right? Class is going to continue. They're going to kind of get bored of making comments. You're going to, you know, raise your hand when the teacher asks a question. You, you know, you're going to start talking. People are going to start drifting away of thinking of you as the person, just the bully, because you aren't, aren't painting that as a picture of yourself. You're not making that entertaining for them. So eventually... Over time, the bullying is going to go down, and you're kind of getting an option to kind of like make a new face for yourself for people to look at you differently. So tell them to stop. That doesn't work. Try to ignore them. If it goes on a long time, you know, let's say it's going on for like two months now, right? It's been like eight weeks. It's a lot of days. And they're still really bothering you. I would even say like after, you know, three weeks, if it, if it really hasn't stopped after a couple of weeks, two, two weeks or three, and it's really kind of starting to get to you now, and you can't just tune them out, I would say you need to try to successfully tune them out for, you know, a week or so, because most of the time it will go away. Trust me, it will go away. But if it's been going on for a long time now, and you've Ignore them. You really actually ignore them. Like each day, you know you did not say anything to them. Did not react to them. Did not cry. Did not put your head down upset. Did not reply to them. That is very crucial. That is how you actually ignore somebody. Right? When you're doing these things, like crying or like leaving or like leaving the table and just doing weird stuff like that. Right? Like they can get a kick out of that. They can try to make you leave the table every day. Right? So, actually not replying to them. And tell them, hey, listen, I'm not going to reply to you. Make sure you tell them that too. Like, I'm ignoring you the rest of the day. Like, you guys are annoying. You're bothering me. I'm just ignoring you guys the rest of the day. And just do it. 
do that for a few days. All right, so we covered stop, sort of walk, and, and walk by that I mean ignore, and you know why it works. You're not as interested in making fun of people that just don't react, just like you don't yell at a wall. Right? Well, people might actually yell at a wall, but you're not always going to yell at a wall, right? You're not going to yell at a wall for fun, right? You yell at a wall to get rid of your anger. All right, and the last one is talk, right? So find somebody, find a teacher, a parent, fellow friends, and talk to them about this problem. Like, listen, dude, these guys are annoying me. I don't know what to do. Um, I tried ignoring them. They just keep at it. You know, they keep messing with my stuff. They keep doing stuff that I really, I can't not ignore, right? They're hiding my, my homework. They're moving my pencils, they're stealing from me, whatever, right? I need to do something about that. In that case, you really got to talk to a teacher and be like, listen, watch them. They are taking my stuff, and I'm going to raise your hand when it happens, and I'm going to let you know when exactly when it happens. I need you to step in and do something, or else I'll have to go to the principal, right? So schools don't want problems in their classrooms. They don't want big deals. They don't want parents getting upset, they don't want kids getting upset, you know, it just, it looks bad on the school, it takes away from the learning process, so make it a big deal, if it's a big deal to you, make it a big deal, make sure that the parents, your parents, the teachers, and the principals are aware of it, and this you can use literally, all three of these techniques can be used at any stage in your life. Whether you're at a job and it's your manager, whether you're playing sports and it's your coach, wherever you're at, you always want to appeal to whoever is in charge of that situation. Tell them to stop because they don't want it to happen either. And even your parents are still useful during those times, right? Your parents might not be able to do anything to your fellow football players, right, or to the people at your job, they might not be able to do anything to them, but what your parents can offer you is emotional support, help give you advice and tips, and kind of very particular to your situation. And it's really important to have that friendship network to give you the strength to kind of move on each day. You know, some positivity to get rid of all the negativity, so you're not just holding it all inside. And that leads me to the new piece of information I want you to use. Those first three are great. And they're going to serve you in a lot of situations. And they will work if you use them right, if you actively use them. But here's the new piece of information I want to give you. And I might do another video to try and make this all shorter so it gets more views because I think I can help people. But the last piece of information I want you to get is that you need to genuinely, completely, and honestly Think about yourself. Think about exactly who you are, what you look like, what you can do, you know. The fact that I have hair sticking out right here, I know this, that, right? All this stuff. Think about everything you are. The fact that I have glasses. Everything that I am. And just accept it. This is how I was born. This is who I am. Now what do I want to do? More than just accepting it, more than just having self-acceptance, you need to have self-love. Not only do you want to accept yourself for who you are, exactly who you are, you need to love yourself exactly for who you are. No strings attached. No conditions. Nothing. Just, who am I? And you have to come to terms with that. Accepting it and loving it. And here's what's happened. Here's what will happen for you in which you do that. And I hope you do do this because it'll be a very strong tool later on in life. If you can do this successfully with conviction that you mean it, then you're going to start to realize that other people's opinions don't change how valuable you are. They're not changing who you are. Right? It's nice when someone comes up to you and says, hey, you know, Nick, you have nice hair today. Cool, thank you. You know, that might make you feel, might make you feel happy or whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change my inner value. Or if in track, like, I'm able to run a little bit faster than I did before. Yeah, that's a good thing. Maybe I'm proud of myself for it. 
but I don't value myself for it. Even if I ran a little bit slower, I'm not all of a sudden worth less as a person. Right? I'm worth the same as a person regardless what I can do. If a new kid joins my school and all of a sudden he likes me, I'm not more valuable of a person now just because this person's opinion, which could go either way, if it's up to them, it doesn't make me more valuable. Right? You're valuable because you're a person, because you're you, because you're a human. Not because of anything that anyone says or does about you. Or if a new person joins you know, your classroom and dislikes you, doesn't, or joins the bullies, or whatever, doesn't make you worse of a person. You're still the exact same person. Just this person had that opinion. It doesn't change your inner value. And when you can realize that your value is the same regardless what's going on around you, Regardless if you have a house or live in an apartment, regardless whether you're rich or you're poor, regardless whether you're fast or you're slow or you're fat or you're skinny or you're smart or you're dumb or whatever you think of yourself, no matter what that is, your value doesn't depend on those things, right? Getting a little bit smarter doesn't all of a sudden make you more lovable, more valuable, better, right? You have to love yourself for exactly who you are. And when you do that, then when these bullies come, start making fun of you, making fun of how you look and all that other stuff and something you said or something you did, it's just like, who cares? At the end of the day, your opinions don't matter. Right? At the end of the day, my value isn't determined whether you happen to like me or not. Yeah, sure, I might feel annoyed, Maybe even sad or angry because you're like making fun of me or doing stuff, right? I'm not going to get those feelings. We're all humans, right? But don't ever let those feelings translate to how you view yourself, right? Don't let those feelings translate to how you value yourself. If you love yourself and accept yourself for exactly who you are, you're going to have a lot more inner strength than before you've ever known because now you're going to be just like a wall all these bad things are going to come and they're going to bounce off because you know you don't get your value from them you get your value from yourself you're going to get that confidence to say what you wanted to say in a given social situation you want to say something in class but you're kind of nervous because you don't know how the other kids are going to take it you don't know what to do or say it all doesn't matter because their opinions don't matter if they happen to like the comment, all right, cool. Yeah, that was nice. But if they dislike the comment, whatever. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you worse. Right? It's just their opinions. And life's going to go on. You're going to find people that agree with you and find people that disagree with you. It's all part of life. And you really got to accept yourself for exactly who you are. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter if you're the least popular kid in that school or the most popular kid. And I'm going to tell you this other thing. If you start living your life for you and loving yourself and realizing that those people don't change the value of you inside, that you're still the same person regardless what they think. When you have that and you use that as a source of confidence to say what you want to say in class, to be yourself, in the world around you, guess what's going to happen? People are going to notice that confidence. Notice you're not shy. They're going to be careful around you because they don't know how you're what you're going to say because you're not going to be afraid to speak up. Right? And secondly, you're going to draw people to you that actually want to hang out with you. You're going to start making truer friends that actually think like you and are kind of walk in the same path as you and enjoy the same humor as you and like the same material as you. And those are the people you're going to surround yourself and those people you're going to be happy with. You're not going to have to hide yourself or fake it. You can just be yourself and have a lot of true friends that a lot of other people will be jealous to have. So my overall statement is Express yourself, be yourself, and love yourself. And that is the greatest tool between bullies. Because when you love yourself, 
nothing they say can bother you. Good luck out there for anyone dealing with bullies. And remember all four of those tips. Stop, walk, and talk. And what I feel is the strongest protection for yourself is just accepting and loving yourself for exactly who you are and knowing your value doesn't depend upon other people's opinions. All right. Good luck, and maybe I'll do another video that's a little bit shorter. But have a great day, and I hope this helps you get out of your, your dark moods or bad spots in your life.